this tutorial, we're going to learn to knit this cap. It's called Downton, and it's inspired by the TV series Downton Abbey, of which I happen to be a big fan. This cap is designed by Annie of KnitsoFacto.com, and she's nice enough to give it to us as a free pattern and in a big range of sizes from baby to adult, which is great. The skill level necessary for this is advanced beginner, I'd say. If you're comfortable with knitting and purling and knitting in the round on circular needles, you should be good because I will cover everything else in this tutorial, the trickier parts of the pattern. If you'd like to get a free copy of this pattern to follow along, you can click the link in the video description just below the video. I'll also give you a link here on screen. That will take you to my website where um, I'll have a link to Annie's website where you can get your copy of the pattern. Also on my website, another important note is that Annie's given me permission to teach this tutorial a bit differently than the written pattern. Uh, in, the main difference is in her pattern, she has us purling the brim of the cap, what you see in black here. Um, in my experience in working with knitters, at least American knitters, we prefer to do a lot of knit stitches over a lot of purl stitches. So a couple of quick changes, and I've made it so this cap is mostly knit and not mostly purled. Uh, and the description for that will be on my website as well the differences that I've made to her pattern. But I'll also note in the tutorial where I stray from her pattern so that you know where you are to follow along. Whichever way you decide to knit it, the basic techniques are the same. And that's it. In the next video, we'll get started with the cap. If you've got your yarn and your needles and your free copy of the pattern, we're ready to get started. The first thing we're going to do is talk about checking gauge. Uh, gauge checking gauge means that you're getting the correct number of stitches per inch, and when you get the correct gauge, it means the pattern is going to come out in the correct size that you're after. If your gauge is off, you'll end up with something that's tiny or huge, and you'll put all this work into something that's not going to fit when you're finished with it. Now, the good thing about this pattern is the top of the cap is knit in a square. This is a huge version of the square that you'll knit for the top of the cap. So you can really just start knitting the pattern. Just follow the instructions for the size that you're knitting, start knitting the pattern, and check gauge on that bit. There's no need to knit up something different. Now this is knit in what she calls double moss stitch, and that's the pattern that we're going to use to check gauge. So cast on the number of stitches for the size that you want, and we're going to talk about doing that. Um, but first I want to talk about checking gauge, so let's go ahead and take a look. This is a big bulky sample of double moss stitch, and this is the pattern you're going to use for the entire crown of the cap. It's also the pattern that we use when we're checking gauge. And I just want to talk about checking gauge really quickly. This is... The pattern gauge is 24 stitches over 4 inches, or 6 stitches per inch. I'm knitting up something much bulkier so you can see what I'm doing here. To check gauge, you'll knit up a little bit of this, and then I like to take, I like to use these wood pins, and I'll give you a link in the video description below to show you, um, to link to where you can get some of these wood pins. I like them because they don't split the stitches. I'm going to put it in between a couple of stitches here and then measure off four inches and then put another one in at the four inch point. And then I count the stitches between to see how many stitches I'm getting over four inches. And if I'm getting too many stitches per inch, I need to go up at least one needle size so the stitches are bigger, so I get fewer stitches per inch. And the opposite is true. If I'm not getting enough stitches per inch, I need to go down a needle size so that more stitches fit in four inches, and I, um, then the gauge will be on from there. Don't proceed until you get the right gauge. It's really important. Okay. Now let's talk about knitting the double moss stitch square. I'm using double pointed needles for no other reason than I like to use the shortest needles possible for anything I'm doing. And again, this is much bulkier yarn than you'll need for the pattern. I'm going to cast on the number of stitches for my size, and I'm using the long tail cast on. I'll give you a link to the long tail cast on video if you need a slow review. Okay, to work the double moss stitch, 
it's on the right side rows, it's just knit two, purl two across. Well, it's actually a four stitch repeat. Let's just go ahead and take a look. I'm going to knit two stitches, and then I'm going to switch to purling, which means I pull the yarn forward between the two needles and purl two. Then I go back to knitting, so I pull the yarn back between the two needles and knit two. Forward, purl two, back, knit two. This is a right side row. I'm just finishing up this right side row, the first row. I'm going to turn the work, and now I'm working a wrong side row. And on all of the wrong side rows, you knit what you see. And I have two knit stitches here, two purl stitches here, two knit stitches. You can follow the pattern. She spells it out very clearly, but if you're just working from what you see on the wrong side rows, you knit the knits and purl the pearls, so we say. It gives us this cool textured pattern. Okay, I just finished this wrong side row. And now I'm on the right side row again when I turn the work. And I'm going to do the opposite of what I see. I see two knit stitches here, two purl stitches, two knit stitches. So I'm going to purl, knit, purl. This is the pattern. On all of the right side rows, you knit the opposite of what you see. And all the wrong side rows, you knit what you see. And I'm gonna explain that a little bit more with another giant sample the biggest sample we've ever had in a video here on Very Pink Knits. Um, this is an enormous sample of the double moss stitch because I want you to be able to see what it is that you're working and how to count when you're finished. You can use your row counter and keep track of the rows like this, that's fine. Um, but if you're just comfortably sitting in your knitting chair, it's easy to look at your work and read it and see where you are. These V's everywhere in these boxes here are all knit stitches and these bumps are all purl stitches. And the pattern will tell you how many rows you need to knit, but it's really easy to count if you lose track with your counter. You can just count, you know that these purl bumps, that's two rows, these purl bumps are two rows, these purl bumps are two rows. So it's two, four, six, eight. I've finished eight rows in this. And that's the easiest way you can count, and it's going to become important in the next video when we talk about picking up stitches from, from the sides of the work. Um, so even if you're talking about a smaller sample, I want it, and this is still bulky, but smaller than the actual work that you'll work when you do the hat, it's easy to see the purl bumps to count how many rows you've done. And when you're finished, you end up with a square of knitting. And in the next video, we're going to talk about picking up stitches and actually working the sides of the crown of the cap. If you've finished knitting the square that is the top of the hat, we're ready to start knitting in the round and picking up stitches to knit the sides of the crown of the cap. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now remember, I'm knitting this on much bulkier yarn with much bigger needles than the pattern calls for, uh, just so you can see what I'm doing. And if you are knitting the pattern as it's written, you're going to be picking up and purling. And if you need a video to show you how to do that, I'll give you a link right here. I'm going to demonstrate what I think is uh, an easier way to knit it, which is to pick up and knit. And this is where we're going to get started. If you finish knitting your square and you're going to pick up and knit, you're going to want to switch to circulars and work one more row across so that your working yarn is here 
and you're ready to pick up on the side right here. That's also for picking up and purling. We're gonna pick up and knit along this side. Now what we're going to make when this is completely finished is we're going to have as many stitches, it's going to be the same number of stitches on each side, so it's a perfect square. In this bulky sample that I'm using, I have 20 stitches, so I'm going to pick up 20 stitches from the side. The pattern spells all of this out really clearly. To make this easier, this is what I've done. Remember how we counted the purl bumps to count the number of rows? I counted up halfway into the work, so I have half of the, half of the rows here and half of the rows here. I know that I'm going to pick up 20 stitches along this side, but it makes it much easier to separate it into 10 and 10 if I need to um, do any fudging to make the spacing work so that they all fit on there evenly. That's how I like to do it. It's easier to pick up 10 and 10 than to pick up 20 over the whole side as far as spacing goes. So, to pick up a knit, I am going to take my, well actually what I like to do is to place a marker so I can start counting. If I lose track, I can start counting from there. This doesn't count as the beginning of my round, it's just um, to help me keep track. I'm going to put my needle under both legs of the first V that I see there, and this one's a little tight. So I have both legs of the V there. I'm putting my needle under that. This is like knitting with one needle. I'm gonna wrap the needle and pull it through. And there I've just picked up one. I go under both legs of the next one, wrap my needle and pull it through. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. It ended up perfect because I was kind of looking ahead to see how many more I had to pick up before I got there. I can take this clippy marker out now. I know I need to pick up 10 more before I get to this corner. I'm having a tough time getting this one picked up. Now the thing is, you will have more stitches on the side of the work than you will have stitches to pick up. So, if you end up messing up and ending up where you, you have too much space left or too many stitches to cram into that space, just back yourself up and space the stitches out differently. You know, I have not been counting these this time. Actually, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna rip this back out. I just wanna get you to the other side, which is our cast on side, which is really easy to pick up because each one of the V's you see here, you're going to pick up because we have 20 live stitches here. We pick up 20 on the side. These numbers are made up for this bulky yarn. Follow your pattern for the correct number. And I'm going to pick up every single one of these cast on stitches, which is going to be 20 on this side. Before I do, I will place another marker here so that it'll make it easy to count as I go across to make sure I've got it correct. And on the first round, I'll take out these markers because they're just there to help me count. And um, I'll make it all the way around I'll pick up from the cast on side and from the other side and once I get back to the live stitch I have here I'll place a marker and that will be the beginning of my round. You'll keep you'll continue with the double moss stitch going around and around and you will eventually end up with a piece that looks like this. It actually starts to look like a hat. And this is a cool trick that I'm gonna show you here because the pattern has us, let me show you in my real cap here. The pattern has us switch colors after we, um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot part of it. We're gonna do the double moss stitch and then we're going to switch to um, two by two rib, which is very much like working the double moss stitch. It's still knit two, purl two, but they always line up and you can follow the pattern for the instructions on that. It's very simple. And then we're going to do a couple of rounds in the same color and then we're going to switch to the other color. And I wanna show you 
an easy way to switch to the other color. And one of the reasons this works is because the colors I chose here are actually both dark and very close. And the place that we switch color ends up being hidden inside the cap. It doesn't show when it's folded over. So to avoid more knots to weave in, this is how, um, more ends to weave in, this is how I do it. Let's say that I'm ready to switch to the other color now. I haven't done the ribbing on this one, but just for example, I'm going to knit up to the marker where I'm ready to switch to the other color, and I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to actually take a clippy marker here. You can just hold it with your finger too, and actually mark that spot on the yarn. That's the exact spot that I want the color to change. It's not that important that it's absolutely perfect, but I want to get as close as I can to the exact spot I want the color to change. And then I'm going to do a cool thing. What I'm doing here is I'm tinking. I'm taking out a few stitches to give myself some room to work with. And I'm actually going to spit splice my second color onto this spot right here. We don't normally spit splice when we're changing colors, but like I said, this is going to be hidden in the work and it's not going to matter. So um, I have my new color of yarn and I am using 100% wool here, which makes this work. This also works on wool blends. It's always worth a try. Sometimes something that is a wool blend will spit splice, sometimes it won't. My policy is to always try spit splicing to see if it will work before, I mean, it's easy enough to try. If it doesn't work, you can just tie a knot. So I separate the plies half and half. This bulky yarn happens to be two ply. I'm going to cut about an inch out of one of those plies. And here's a spot where I want to change color. I'll cut the yarn there and separate the plies and cut an inch out of this one. Now I'm going to put those together and spit. You can't see me do this, but I'm going to put this in my mouth. I got it nice and spitty. <laughs> you can see that. And then I'm going to twist these together. And line up the cut parts. And then with heat and friction, I am going to splice these. And this is such a great trick for not having to weave in so many ends. Okay, and that is secure. I can actually make the yarn look a little better here because it's fuzzing out. But that's good. And I have a little bit of space there where I have two colors going on. But like I said, in this, it's really not going to make much of a difference. It's going to be inside the cap. I'll work my pattern back up to where I was. And when we get to the marker, if everything goes well, it should be changing color just about right on target. Ta-da! We're changing color just about right on target here. If your colors are really dramatically different, you might not want to do this, but it's an easy enough thing to do if your colors are similar. Depends on how many people you think are going to be inspecting the wrong side of your cap. Okay, and there's my color change. You're going to follow the pattern and continue with the stockinette, either knitting every round like I'm showing you here or purling as Annie has it in the pattern. And next up we're going to talk about doing the finishing work on the cap. If you've finished your cap and you've bound off, I want to talk about doing some nice finishing work so the cap looks really good when you're done. The first thing I want to talk about is the possibility of color bleeding. If you're using two dramatically different colors for your cap, when you go to wash this in wool wash and set it out to dry, uh, when it's actually wet, there is a chance that the darker color will bleed into the lighter color. You can test this. What I like to do is um, take a little glass of the hottest water from the tap and cut a piece of the yarn and put it, the darkest yarn, and put it in there and see if any color transfers. And that's kind of a, 
extreme test because I would never wash hand knits in um, water that hot, but that's a sure way to see if any color is going to come out. If you are worried about color bleeding or um, if you notice that it's, it's going to because you did a test, what you can do, you can do this anytime you're knitting in multiple colors, is fill the sink with cold water and before you use wool wash on it, use vinegar. Put, um, put this cold water in the sink and maybe a cup or two. I always, I always use a lot of vinegar. A, a vinegar in the water, swish that around, and then let the piece soak in there for 15 minutes or so. That should help set the rest of the dye if any of it's going to bleed. And then you can go ahead and do it with warmer water, lukewarm water, and wool wash, and it, the colors should be set. If you do notice that when you put the, the cap in there, if it's starting to bleed a little bit, just drain the water and get it out of there quick and do another vinegar soak or something. Um, it's a good idea to check the yarn, of course, before you start knitting because really dramatic, dramatically different colors, it, they can be ruined if the color bleeds into the other color. So that's one sure way to be careful about that. The other thing I want to talk about is fixing the jog at the end. You finish knitting the stockinette and you've bound off. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. I have this little sample here, which is stockinette bound off, and when you're knitting in the round, you end up with this, this jog like this when you're finished, because knitting in the round is not really rounds as much as it is a giant spiral. So one, the, the beginning is going to be a half step lower than the end. And I know this is in tiny small gauge, but I had to mark the spot where my end was because this method I'm going to show you makes it look so nice and tidy. But this end does curl up into the work, but this is a technique you can use anytime you're knitting in the round and you bound off and you want it to look good. So I have my jog here that I want to fix and a tapestry needle. I'll thread the yarn onto there. And I'm going to go from the end here, jumping over to the other side. You'll see the bind off row looks like a bunch of V's. Take your tapestry needle and go under both legs of the first V and pull that tight and then go back down into the same hole you came out of, which is creating another V. So that you have, do you see what I just did? All those V's are lining up perfectly now and the jog is fixed. In this really bulky sample, I still have a little bit of a hole right here and you don't always see this with, with finer knitting, but I still have a bit of a hole right here, so I'm just going to weave in this end to um, make that hole invisible. And there we go. Look how nice that looks. And I think that's all you need to the trickier parts of the downhand cap. Good luck with that. And one more note. Here at Very Pink Knits, we release a video every Wednesday morning. An easy way to make sure you never miss a video is to subscribe to the channel.